Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can use the navigation or localizer hold to help line you up for a landing for an ILS. To make things interesting, of course, uh, we're in the middle of a really heavy winter storm, and I said, you know, this might be kind of fun to do some IFR work. And I said, you know what, let's do some IFR work. So what I'm doing is I'm taking off here from, this is called Orange Municipal. This is a Kilo Oscar Romeo Echo for those of you who like to try this out. I really appreciate having this synthetic vision. It's one of those things where I usually don't care about it that much, but, you know, today is the day when I want it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flying up to Keene, New Hampshire, and we're going to be attempting to land the aircraft. What I'm going to be doing different with their ILS approach today is I'm actually going to be using the navigational holds to get us established with the uh, basic lateral left and right, and then we're going to flip over onto the approach hold once we get a little bit closer to the ground. Now, there's one thing I did learn about uh, kind of experimenting with this technique a little earlier, and that's the fact that one of the problems you may run into is certain aircraft don't have the avionics set up correctly. Uh, because you don't, when you go to do this process, don't be surprised if things don't latch on correctly. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and fast forward and get us over to the approach. All right, everything is looking pretty good. We're now cruising. We managed to get over. We're kind of between layers right now to make me a little bit more safe. <laughs> so I've got ahead and uh, loaded in the ILS approach here. And the first thing I noticed is that up here in the top corner, I noticed that the G1000, I noticed, noticed, uh, automatically selected the correct ILS frequency. Now that's a pretty handy thing, except um, one of the problems you're going to run into with this is you won't be able to properly capture the localizer because I've noticed every once in a while that Microsoft Flight Simulator assumes the wrong heading. And if you try to do this, you're going to run into really big problems trying to get the plane safely down on the ground, especially if you're using automatic pilot here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to go ahead and flip onto my heading hold real fast. Come down here, press that button. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to flip my frequencies to get out of that frequency. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and dial in the correct approach. Now, for those of you who have uh, done this approach before, you're probably familiar with this one. I'll go ahead and grab it real quickly so you all can see it. You can see that our approach is going to put us on an 18-degree approach. And we also need to be on 10890. Uh, with that information handy, and we know exactly what we need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this 18 degrees. Perfect. Now that I've pre-selected that, I can just switch back over to the appropriate ILS frequency. So I'm going to go pop here. It's going to go ahead and recognize it. And you're going to notice I'm right on track. Now here's what's so cool. We've already acquired the localizer, but not the glide slope. So what I'm actually going to do is reach over here and watch how naughty this is. Boop. I'm going to press nav. Now when I press nav, uh, one thing you're going to notice is at the tippy top here where it says lock. Normally this would say VOR, sometimes it'll say something like um, a GPS. It's going to say LOC, meaning it's acquired the localizer. What does that mean? That means we now have left and right navigation on our aircraft, even though we are not on the glide slope. Well, which means if I were to over mash the approach button real quick, it would start looking for that glide slope. Some old planes actually had the ability to select glide slope independent of the localizer, which is actually pretty cool. We can't do that. We've got the handy dandy a little button to kind of get us set up. So what I'm going to do is fast forward a little bit to when this glide slope starts making its way down. And there we go. Now that we've gotten a little bit closer to our destination there, I've noticed that this little tiny diamond indicating our oh, vertical position is starting to slowly make its way down. A couple of things I want to double check real fast. Am I on the right frequency? Is the identifier correct? Yep, 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 yep. And I notice I'm slightly off to the right here, but again, we'll reacquire this. I'm still on navigation mode. So what I'm going to do now is once this little glide slope gets to be one diamond above, I'm going to select the approach button. Uh, what that's going to do now is it's going to switch us over to trying to capture glide slope as well as trying to capture everything else that we are looking at a little bit earlier. So it looks like it's right there. I'm going to go ahead and arm the approach. Now that I've armed the approach, you'll notice that we have this little white GS indication here, meaning we have not captured it, but we have armed the glide slope. Now remember, we've been following the localizer the entire time here, so we had plenty of time to acquire. So now watch what happens when our glide slope smacks right into us, which is going to be right about where that needle is there. You're going to notice this is going to turn green, and the aircraft is immediately going to begin its descent down into a landing position. So um, we've seen plenty of ILS approaches before. Uh, this doesn't have to be any different than that one, but I'll fast forward right to the last couple moments. Oh no, I've just gotten a report that there's somebody on the runway and they're preventing us from landing. What shall I do? Ha <laughs> ha, watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip on my nav hold. I'm going to go ahead and press my altitude hold. 
Now you're sitting there going, wait, what did you just do? Uh, what I just did is I aborted my ILS approach and I'm now using the localizer side of the ILS approach to fly me towards the runway. Now, this is a neat little trick if you're looking into one of those missed approach situations where you really want to land the plane, but something causes you not to be able to safely land the plane. I know you can see the little uh, dancing, the uh, rabbit basically running away from us off in the distance, which means we could probably have made this landing work. But I just wanted to share how we can still follow the localizer, excuse me, towards the airport without having to worry about actually going up or down. And this is a neat little trick, and uh, some people like to do what they call localizer approaches, where there is no up and down information, and you can use this exact same technique to basically manually fly your plane down there. Other than that, enjoy.